2024 meeting, Town of Woodbridge Board of Police Commissioners. The first item on our agenda is the election of officers and subcommittee assignments. Is there a nomination for chair? I, no I nominate Attorney Burke. Sorry, Sorry. Chair. Sorry. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Right. Carries unanimously. <clears throat> is there a nomination for vice chair? Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. That carries unanimously as well. Um, <clears throat> there are two subcommittees, uh, personnel and budget. Um, is there a nomination for the budget subcommittee? Um, in the past it was... We had me we had Andy, Andy and, and Mika. Okay. And then uh, Dr. Desir and Mr. Capel were for the uh, personnel subcommittee. Okay. So the vacancy is for budget. <clears throat> um, don't we have to also appoint the, reappoint the other subcommittees as well? Not just the vacancy? Sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, would you be willing to make a nomination for <clears throat> the budget subcommittee? Yes, I, I would like to nominate Commissioner Esposito and Unless he objects. Westerfeld. Westerfeld. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. That carries out, obviously. And the final subcommittee is personnel. Mr. Esposito, would you be willing to nominate someone? Personnel subcommittee. I guess I would. <laughs> I'd like to uh, nominate uh, yeah, Dr. Desir and Henry. Okay. Thank you. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? No. Yes, there's yeah. Okay. That carries on, obviously. Obviously, you'll put in the appropriate uh, perceptions in that. I will. Thank you. Um, Next item of agenda is approval of the minutes. I'm the only one. Oh, wait a second. Um, so, Dr. Sear, um, Attorney Capel, and Mr. Esposito can are the only people that can vote on this. Um, they get a chance to review the minutes. Yes. Okay. Is there a motion to approve the minutes from so January 8, 2024? Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? That carries unanimously. Um, obviously, we're putting the appropriate extension there. Um, next on our agenda is the executive session for personnel. Um, I'd ask the well, action. Is there a motion to move to executive session? I'll move. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. There were no votes taken. Um, the only item that was addressed for executive session was the interview of the uh, police recruit candidate. Um, is there a motion to extend a conditional uh, offer of employment subject to physical, um, psychological evaluation and the withdrawal of any applications to any other agencies? Um, and the candidate is Cassidy Kirby. Is there a second? Yeah. Second. Okay. Uh, is there any discussion? All those in favor? Carries unanimously. Thank you. Thank you all. The next item on our agenda is public comments. Janice, is there anyone from the public that wish to be heard? Yes, ma'am. Um, and I see no one from the public that is here. The next item are the uh, review of the reports. First is the financial report. Chief. Yes, so we're just over eight months through the fiscal year, and as of last week, we remain on contract, having, having used approximately 67% of our budget thus far. Um, two lines that I'm sure you'll uh, draw attention to. The first one is police overtime line. That continues to be significantly impacted. As of last week, it was at 145.5%. But that directly correlates with our staffing level challenges as we've discussed over the um, past several months. And I'm anticipating that that will start to level off due to the um, 
the status of our three recent hires who have all um, now been included into the minimum manpower staffing. So that will help us with that. Um, and additionally, um, line 51800, the uniform allowance line, you'll see that one went over, slightly over. Um, and that has to do with we had uh, four vacant officer positions to be filled with new Three of them just got filled. And um, body armor uh, replacements and three new officers that got body armor as well. And uh, we have a partnership with the government and the Federal Bulletproof Vest um, Award will be coming in the amount of uh, just over $3,400. So that will be submitted. Um, that was submitted when the vest arrived just a few weeks ago. And that reimbursement will be coming back to the town to help offset that line to bring that, that, that back down. Other than that, let's see if there's any questions. So, so for the, for the overtime, mm -hmm. so we've hired three certified officers. Are, are there active steps that are taken to reduce the overtime, or do we just expect this to be a, a passive way of dealing with it? There's a lot of, no overtime goes unless it's um, authorized by a supervisor. But I think having these three new bodies, three new officers on the road, that will eliminate a lot of the staffing over time that we are paying just to, to cover the patrol minimum. That's where the bulk of it was coming from. Um, covering from manpower vacancies. That's, that's really what hurt us for the past six, seven months plus. But the other issue we had, we had uh, people that were out long-term. <clears throat> it's a long-term injury, so we couple long-term injuries with the vacancies that we had, and we have minimum staffing levels per bargaining agreement. It made it difficult for us to um, uh, have the appropriate amount of numbers of officers and the way to do that it would be to hire over time. How are we doing with some of these long-term disability cases? We're doing well. I'll talk about it when we get to personnel, but um, yeah, we have a couple that are out, but uh, I'll elaborate a bit more. Right. We have, we're, we're a lot better than we uh, have been for the past several months. Are there any other questions regarding the financial report? Is there a motion to approve the financial report? So moved. Is there a second? No second. Any discussion? All those in favor? There's an answer. Next item on the agenda is the activity report. Okay, for the criminal activity report uh, during the past two months, so for January and February, amongst other various calls, um, as shown in the monthly statistical reports that were distributed in your packets, also responded to one uh, forcible residential burglary occurred up on the Forest Glen Drive towards the end of January while the residents were away. It was entry was gained by breaking a window and jewelry and other personal documents were stolen. Also responded to seven family disputes over the past two months, five of uh, which involved some degree of violence and resulted in arrest. We had nine fraud cases of various sorts, um, online fraud, telephone scams, uh, bank-related frauds, nine larceny, uh, nine different larceny investigations. We had 10 Larcenies from motor vehicles that occurred, many of them occurred in the overnight hours at various locations throughout town. That responded to 189 calls for medical assistance, 12 mental health related uh, issue calls, and we had four stolen vehicle investigations, uh, cars stolen throughout town, and 26 suspicious activity calls of various types. Some of the criminal arrests that we have, uh, January 24th, uh, the DUI arrest uh, involving the uh, accident that occurred at 69, Route 69 Dallas Road. January 30th, they served an arrest warrant pertaining to another uh, motor vehicle accident in which the driver of the offending vehicle fled the scene. Regarding um, a lot of the thefts from the vehicles, in um, the press release that I shared with you back in February. So on February 2nd, uh, 
officers respond to five separate motor vehicle break-ins uh, in, in one stolen motor vehicle that happened uh, throughout various areas of town. Uh, the broadcast a description of that vehicle and was later seen in West Haven and pursued up onto the, up onto the turnpike into Milford after the, the occupants had committed an armed car, carjacking. Using a firearm, uh, two juveniles were taken into custody. Our officers were able to investigate further the five incidents that we had, and they were able to make some arrests for the incidents that um, had occurred earlier in that day in, in our town. So that was related to the thefts of uh, the thefts of the vehicle, and also uh, several of the thefts from motor vehicles that had occurred. Also, uh, during the month of February, they served four criminal arrest warrants. Uh, February 2nd, an arrest warrant was served for subject wanted for reckless endangerment, criminal mischief, breach of peace, for disturbance that was caused at a local, res uh, local restaurant back in December. February 7th, uh, they served the warrant for a DUI uh, as a result of an investigation into another accident that occurred in December. And they served two violation of probation arrest warrants in connection with the subject that was arrested uh, by officers for varsity and interfering with police uh, in an incident that also occurred in, in December. As far as the investigative services unit, uh, they assumed 13 new case investigations during the past two months. And as I pre previously reported, over the past several months, they've been working with the New Haven State's Attorney's Office on the prosecution of the second suspect involved in the 2021 homicide that occurred at the Peas Road Park. That was brought to a successful conclusion with a recent guilty plea, to which on February 29th, the suspect was sentenced to 35 years of uh, incarceration. So that was a great uh, resolution of that case. Uh, Great police work and collaboration by every, everyone involved. Uh, detectives have been working with the State Forensics Laboratory on several cases um, that are open in conjunction with um, a federal grant funding that became available to provide further uh, DNA testing and forensic genetic gene genealogical uh, testing on evidence that was submitted for analysis. And they've been working in conjunction with some of the neighboring police departments on a suspect uh, that's involved uh, with several armed robberies that occurred, one of which occurred at a local uh, gas station convenience store in our town. Additionally, over the past two months, they conducted 22 public fingerprinting requests, performed uh, processing and background investigations for 11 pistol permit applicants, and completed the background investigation process uh, for three police officer candidates, one who was presented to the board this evening. And that's why I have on the criminal side, and the uh, deputy chief will share some information on the uh, motor vehicle enforcement activity for the past couple months. During the uh, month of February, our officers made 84 traffic stops which was the same exact number of traffic stops that were made in January. Uh, we conducted radar speed enforcement at various locations uh, 346 times. Uh, deterrent traffic safety patrols, 336 of those during the month of February. There were 26 motor vehicle accidents in Woodbridge during the month of February, which is a 7% decrease of our January numbers. Our speed trailer was located at several different locations, including Johnson Road and Brookwood Drive, Johnson Road and Clearview Road, and Seymour Road and Rock Hill Road. These are um, roadways where we've gotten um, several complaints from residents. And that's the uh, traffic report. Greater <coughs> speed enforcement still results in warnings, tickets. Uh, those uh, sometimes do. So basically what those are, our officers are assigned to various locations throughout town. And um, they conduct speed enforcement for approximately half an hour at each time. And sometimes they do uh, 
there was only infractions or a warranty for an emergency door. But there's, there, there are stops. There are motor vehicle stops, yes. Motor vehicle stops originate from these mm -hmm. uh, events, yes. Do we find that the use and application of the signs, the speed signs, are having any effect on any of the roads you put them on? Yeah, they most definitely are. Uh, where, we, uh, where we put them on North Peace Road, Johnson Road, Litchfield Turnpike, um, while they're out and about, they're definitively making a difference. Unfortunately, once we remove them, we're back to uh, where we started. So we have to couple that with speed enforcement, which that's what we've been really focusing our efforts on um, areas in which we're receiving the complaints and where we're having a high volume of motor vehicle accidents. Um, you know, unfortunately, um, it's a primary complaint in town is speeding vehicles. I know someone, I mean, uh, obviously I'm up and down Beach Road every day because I live right up in Europe. And I'll tell you when that sign is, Every time I see that sign, I look at your speedometer. I mean, just automatic. I like to see where you're at. And it's so easy to go. These cars, you step on your gas, you're going 50 miles an hour, not 35 miles an hour. So, I mean, you're... I think that's the whole goal of it, too, to promote the awareness see, and the, the awareness. attention. And it works. I mean, you know, and those things aren't that expensive, so maybe you know, we need more of them. Do you have um, like internal targets as far as how many times you go out and do radar enforcement? Yeah. Or for fines or anything? Or, there, yeah, every, or you just uh, when you have a chance? Yeah, every, every officer is uh, assigned as part of their daily duties to do speed enforcement a handful of times at, at various locations. Locations in which we, we think um, really need the enforcement. So motion to approve the activity report. several months, the members of the South Central Chiefs of Police Association, which we belong to, have been, have been discussing revisions to our region's mutual aid compact. And uh, the revisions were recently finalized, and a copy of that was included in your package for your reference. So our discussions follow the membership's recognition that the operating environment for police has changed, creating a greater likelihood that police departments will have to assist each other Everybody's dealing with staffing issues. Um, they're dealing with the ATV street takeovers that go from one community to the next. Fines uh, that are crossing town boundary, town boundaries. So additionally, the redraft and resigning of the compact is being done pursuant to recent legislation associated with the Connecticut Public Act 2381. Um, which in part states that any municipality upon the approval of the chief executive executive office and when required by charter ordinance the governing body of such municipality may enter into agreement with any other <coughs> municipality with respect to requesting and supplying police assistance so including the guidelines outlined in the body of our revised compact i shared what you see there with um, first selectman cardozo and he was in agreement with it um, I'm in agreement with it. Uh, from what I understand is so far everybody, uh, at least half the, the departments in our organization so far have gotten back. And the other ones are waiting to go before their governing boards as I'm doing this evening. So as a final step in the process, I just need the approval of, um, of the board to move forward with that and we'll sign off on it and get it back to South Central Chiefs of Police. So Mika has reviewed this? Yes, sir. Yeah. And just to, just to clarify, so this applies to <coughs> all municipalities in the South Central region or neighboring? Um, there's like 18 or 19, it's all in the South Central region, yes. Yeah. So we all buy kind of by the same rules. So. When do we have to respond to this? 
I'm going to throw up the next meeting because there's one aspect that's missing from this that I want you to talk to me about. Um, so there are occasions where there are a number of departments that are asked to participate in police investigation. And when there's civil liability imposed based upon the conduct, this document doesn't address how that is handled. Responsible for whatever costs are associated. <coughs> but that's not a cost that's listed here. Yeah. We can take away and you can talk to me. I'll just I'll yeah. Um, until I hear, we'll talk, I'll tell them we'll delay until next board meeting. Yeah, that's the only thing that I'd like to just clarify. <coughs> I had been involved in it in, in a civil matter that had multiple departments and it was a coverage issue and who's going to be responsible. Right. Yeah, I mean, I know it's going to. Legal counsel for the organization, but uh, it may have, but that doesn't mean they they got it right. Yeah. No, no worries. So we'll Stay with you. I'll let them know that we'll get back to the table with them. And you're gonna you're gonna we'll meet with me and resolve it by our next meeting. Yes. How, how often does this occur? Usually, a request. Not not super often, but you know it has to be in place. We just had an incident the other day that. Um, and the chief scout to all of us for you know, possibility that something might be out of the horizon. So, you, you never really know. And we also, we've been involved most recently with the, um, the TV, which we take over things. Everybody's been changing. Everybody's <coughs> been participating from all the different departments and going from one town to another. Chief in general, this sounds like a really important thing, especially when there's major actions happening that need most happening. But one question is, um, how difficult or easy is it for officers in a town to merge into the procedures and protocols of a neighboring or nearby town when they do this? I'm guessing most procedures are pretty standard across the state, but are there any exceptions to that where there's a lot of communication that has to be done so these things work out appropriately? Yeah, and if, there, if it's an event that's known in advance, then they'll have, um, you know, briefings before. If it's something that happens suddenly, then, you know, it's a lot different. Um, but there'll always be, you know, the department where you're going to the highest ranking officer at that agency would be the one to take the lead and be in charge. But a lot of the protocols are the same. Some of the departments actually, you know, have, we're on, they're on our portable, we have their, um, Frequency, so we can communicate to other departments um, by portable radio, if if need be. And the fact of you know how often this happens, um, you know, it, it all goes in, into um, you know certain times of the year where we're requesting. Sometimes when we only have two officers on the road. You know, violent domestic, and if something else happening, you may have to call Seymour or Derby or whatever to, to help us um, do what we have to do if we have you know, multiple things going on. So it is something I think that happens more frequently. So you have to execute this every year or some of the time period? Um, this is a new one. The one that they had before was called the Dual Plan, and it, um, it had been a in effect for probably a decade or more. So now they realize that it's time to change it. This is a little bit more simplex. Um, the other one kind of required a certain number of people to respond. And everyone realizes now there's times um, when you don't have people that, that you can send or a certain designated number of personnel to send, especially for smaller departments. So, so this, once it goes into effect, it'll probably stay for a while. <clears throat> Your next item is the uh, EFPG, correct? Yes, so the Local Emergency Operations Plan. Uh, just an update on that. Over the past year, and in conjunction with the Department of Emergency Management and <coughs> Homeland Security, um, I worked on revising our town's Local Emergency Operations Plan. Uh, 
uh, which for all municipalities is a mandate to be done every two years. The completed plan was updated to a digital format and now includes uh, new civil preparedness standards. Uh, submitted to the state uh, Department of Emergency Management and Homeland Security Office for review at the end of December. <coughs> and in January, we received notification that it was approved and found to be in compliance with state uh, statutory requirements. In conjunction with that, I also applied for a supplemental grant. Uh, it's called an Emergency Management Performance Grant. It's a funding offer that if we were able to get this done before December 31st and get it in and approve the town, um, receive a $5,000 stipend uh, grant award. So that should be forthcoming to the town. So that's all completed. And I just want to make you aware of that. Are there limitations on the application of the grant money? Um, it has to be used towards different things, but for emergency management, it could be used towards the EOC, towards equipment, towards training, towards the Yeah, And Tony, um, Tony manages that usually, so he's been very, um, very uh, great assistance to us with uh, where, that's, where that money should go. But yeah, it works out. It works out. Chief, is this in reference to emergent situations happening in the community, or is this where police functioning is impacted by an emergency? No, emergency operations uh, could be a disaster, or weather, uh, severe weather event, almost anything, sure. any kind of emergency that happens in the community. Thank you. Joe, you retired. I don't know. Who's in the town council? Um, it's someone from Birchin and Moses. I don't know the exact uh, Chinese name. Yeah. Yes, they did name it. They did name it. Okay. <coughs> okay. Um, no. This was Taylor. So the um, next, the next item was uh, the Connecticut uh, Department of Transportation grant that we'll be participating in. So our municipality was selected to participate in an upcoming. Connecticut DOT Distracted Driving Enforcement Campaign that's fun being funded through a grant um, that came from the National Highway Safety Administration. It involves no funding match, so it's 100% um, fully reimbursable to the town for the cost of officers participating in the detail. The Deputy Chief um, is overseeing the administration of the grant and we will be partaking in high visibility enforcement details on various states um, throughout the entire month of April with the goal of decreasing crashes and injuries by promoting awareness of mobile phone use um, by our drivers throughout town. So that's coming up uh, starting in the next couple weeks. And our department was recently recognized by the Crimes Analysis Unit of the State Police for Excellency in completing the full year of 2023 with no errors associated with our mandatory NIBRS reporting. NIBRS uh, is an ac acronym for the National Incident Based Reporting System, to which local, state, and federal law enforcement agencies are required to collect and report data to regarding crime, regarding each crime occurrence within their jurisdiction. Accurate NIBRS reporting is a tedious task. It was only because of the collaborative efforts of the, our officers and detectives writing reports, coupled with the thorough review by our supervisors and our records clerk, that ensured the documenting of all the necessary data by our agency, which enabled us to be recognized for this noticeable achievement. So uh, kudos to everybody from top to bottom of getting that done. I don't think uh, that's something that that we've gotten for quite some time now. And the last topic was the dispatch renovation project that's been underway for the last month or so. Um, that's coming along and continues to progress. It's all sheetrocked, painted. The new flooring and carpeting is scheduled to go in Wednesday and Thursday of this week. And the new fixtures and cabinetry, cabinetry are going in um, after that, the dispatch uh, furniture consoles uh, are scheduled to be delivered on March 26th and we remain on target for April 2nd, at which time dispatch will be moved from its temporary location down the back 
where we usually meet um, and be up in front and fully functional. So um, that's all come along. Um, really going to be a great improvement. And um, four goals well, we should be able to have our next meeting back at our former site there. And that's all I have on the my reports. I would entertain a motion to approve the report of the chief. So moved. There's a second. 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 All those in favor? We have has to unanimously. Um, next item are the personnel matters. The first topic was uh, the promotional exam for sergeant's position. So in our current budget for fiscal year 24, um, we had proposed and were granted funding to make a sixth sergeant's position. Funding for that was also included in our proposed budget um, for fiscal year 25 as a request as well. That position has been on hold for the past eight months in part due to union discussions and issues followed by our critical staffing shortage that we experienced for the past several months due to injuries, departures, and retirements. Having the sixth sergeant uh, will not only increase supervision, but will greatly reduce the frequency of occasions uh, when we are operating with only an officer in charge rather than a sergeant. So now that we are almost back to full strength with only the one vacancy remaining that um, was filled this evening, um, my intention is to move forward with that testing process. I discussed it with the finance director and he had no concerns with it as the funding for the position um, and it's all in place. And I've also uh, discussed it with Dr. Sherwood, who is the director of the South Central Criminal Justice Administration and he's willing and available to conduct the promotional testing process as he has recently done for us in the past. So the plan is that we'll move forward with that and try to get that position filled as well. We have two incidents that occurred uh, for which I issued letters of recognition and wanted to formalize, formally uh, acknowledge all officers they're included in your package. The first one um, went to Sergeant Scott and then Detective Luzzi. And it was in regards to an incident that occurred on December 11th when police, fire, and EMS personnel responded to a motor vehicle rollover accident on Litchfield Turnpike, just north of Dillon Road. Uh, upon Sergeant Scott's arrival, this is informative in that the occupants had all fled the overturned vehicle on the last scene running southbound on Litchfield Turnpike. Um, additional investigation revealed that the vehicle had been stolen earlier in the day out of, out of New Haven. Brief time later, uh, Detective Luzzi located two of the individuals uh, who had fled the scene running up Dillon Road and further investigation by Sergeant Scott. Detective Luzzi led to the identification of a third juvenile who had also fled from the scene. So because of their swift response and investigative efforts um, resulted in the apprehension of three subjects uh, associated with the theft of the vehicle. So on behalf of the board and myself, I commend them for their dedication to duty and for a job well done. And the second letter of recognition went to <coughs> Sergeant Brian Petalino, Detective Luzzi, uh, Officer Prolikas, Officer Meehan, and Officer Testa. And that involved an incident that occurred on December 29th at about 10.48 p.m. Um, they responded to a Bradley Road construction site, a report of a larceny in pro progress. Upon arrival, Officer Meehan located a suspicious vehicle, which suddenly fled the area by driving across the, the lawn of the property headed northbound on 69. A short time later, that vehicle returned. Um, to the Bradley Road area where it was involved in a minor collision and the operator fled on foot in an attempt to elude the police. Um, the officers in the sergeant that I mentioned um, set up a perimeter and they were able to strategically search the area and finally um, located and took the suspect uh, into custody without incident. So due to their collective professional efforts and diligence um, and persistence Located with him, I also um, commend the dead and thank them for, uh, for recognizing them for a job well done. Any 
And moving on to the um, extended absence, as, uh, as Commissioner Esposito um, mentioned earlier. So currently, uh, we have one sergeant who had been out of work on an extended workers' comp related injury since March of 2023. Um, he recently returned with clearance for light duty, uh, pending further doctor's evaluation. So he's back on light duty um, office work at this time. And we also have an officer who remains out of workman's comp related injury that started in November of 2023. And his return to work date at this point is uh, uncertain, uh, pending further medical review. Additionally, just an update, our records clerk who I previously reported had unfortunately sustained and off the job injury and been out of work since October of 2023 was uh, cleared and she re recently returned back to duty last month. And a supervisor who I previously reported to be out for a non-work related medical uh, reason, he returned last month on light duty and he is anticipated to return to full duty uh, at the beginning of April. And then just a quick update on the, our new hires, the three most recent hires, Officer Testa, Officer San Martino, and Officer Robinson. They have all successfully completed their necessary certifications and transitioned very well through their certified officer training um, program without incident. All three are now on patrol and improved as regular staffing levels where they continue to do very well. And their addition has been extremely beneficial to addressing our staffing challenges. And that's all for personnel. Next item on the capital property budget update. Frank, I have one question. Sure. The letter of recognition, that was a Friday evening, 10.48 p.m. You had five officers on this. It was shift change. It said right before, yeah. It was right before shift change. Yes. 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 <coughs> yeah, because you had five officers yeah. involved in that. Yeah. So that, I mean, that, that, very convenient. Yeah, we're, it worked out well. It worked out well. well. Okay. Yeah, it worked out well with that. It's right 11 o'clock. Shift change or something. Coming in early. <clears throat> All right. Just an update on our capital and operating <coughs> budget. So on January 25th, we presented our Fiscal year 25 capital and operating budgets to a joint meeting of the Board of Selectmen and Boards of Finance. And you know, thank you to Commissioner Esposito and Commissioner Westerfeld for their support that evening. Since then, the Board of Selectmen um, has met and they reviewed the various budgets and made their budget recommendations to the Board of Finance with any adjustments that they felt to be appropriate. Uh, the most significant adjustments made to our budget thus far um, included the elimination of our funding request for one additional patrol officer, um, the elimination of our funding request of uh, one of two requested new patrol vehicles, and reduction of uh, $25,000 of uh, proposed increase that we had made in funding for police officer overtime. The Board of Finance will be meeting this week, I believe Wednesday, March 20th, to further review the budgets recommended to them by the Board of Selectmen and the Board of Finance uh, will make their recommended budget um, after that and that will be presented at the preliminary budget hearing which is currently scheduled for April 25th at 7.30 p.m. And that will be followed um, by the annual town meeting that is scheduled for May 20th also at 7.30 p.m. All right, so their recommendations they're talking about were from the board of selectmen. Yes. So they haven't had, so we haven't heard from the board of finance. No. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Is there a motion to adjourn the board of police commissioners? Okay. Is there a second? Second. All well, that. All those in favor. Aye. Aye. Carries unanimously. Um, <coughs> It is now 717. Welcome to the Lucas Traffic Authority. Is there anyone from the public that has sent any correspondence? I see no one else in the audience. And three items on our <coughs> agenda. Um, we'll start with the ride for hope. Okay, the first one is um, 
our annual request from the Milford Prevention Council regarding their 12th annual Ride for Hope charity motorcycle fundraising ride. Uh, the goal of their nonprofit organization is aimed at reducing underage drinking and preventing youth substance abuse. A portion of their 70 mile ride will be passing through our town on Sunday, June 2nd. The ride uh, commences in Milford at 10 a.m. and will be concluded by approximately 12.30 in the afternoon. The route travels from Orange into Woodbridge on Reesbrook Road where it continues northbound and turns left down to Rimmon, proceeds into summer, into Seymour. And um, later that afternoon it returns and route back to Milford traveling the same route in, in reverse. <coughs> we have uniformed police escorts from Milford leading the ride and uh, we've conducted it through town for the past several years without incident. And we make our patrols aware that it's coming through that day, so they could also assist as necessary. And just need the traffic authorities approval to allow them to proceed forward and obtain the required uh, Connecticut DOT special highway use permit that they need. Is there a motion to approve? Second. There's a second. Second. All those in favor? All right. Carries unanimously. And just two other items I want to bring to your attention of the traffic. So in January, a concern was expressed to the first selectman's office um, that I was asked to follow up on. It, and it had to do with accidents occurring at the Ribbon Road and Northrop Road, Peck Hill intersection there. The offset angular configuration of the intersection coupled with the geography in the area that's comprised of uh, declines from both the east and the west approaches, you know, agreeably makes it a challenging intersection to navigate. As a result, we conducted a crash history survey and found that over the past four years, so from January 2020 through January 2024, there were six accidents at that location, uh, two, two of which involved minor injuries and four of which were property damage only. Back in, going back to 2021, at my request, the Connecticut DOT reviewed the designated passing lanes in that stretch of uh, 313 from the Seymour line all the way down to uh, the intersection of 313, which is River Road. And they found, um, they found that the, the passing lanes there were appropriate. And as a result of their study, they also replaced some speed limit signs that they said um, for some reason went missing over the years. And then also during the most recent resurfacing project in that area, the DOT installed satellite rumble strips as a countermeasure to, re to reduce crashes. Uh, we went out and further inspected the area and was found that although the traffic traveling eastbound, so coming from Seymour towards Peck Hill and in Northrop Road intersection there, um, traffic there is forewarned of the approaching intersection by a proper signage, but there was no signage if you're going from New Haven towards Seymour as you come over the Crested Hill. There's a sign before you get the westward, but after warning you about the westward road intersection, but not um, the next intersection here that this person um, expressed their concern about. So with that, I notified the Connecticut DOT Operations Center um, and requested that they install such signs if they felt it was warranted. So that's up to them, but I um, shared that information with them of our findings. And I also shared it with the resident in our first selection and just wanted to make you aware of that as well. And the last item I have to share <coughs> involved the uh, involved our meeting we had with with uh, Senator Cabrera who was invited to attend. <coughs> He's invited by one of the members of our traffic committee that meets uh, several times a year. Uh, if you would want to attend one of our meetings, so that, lo and behold, he did attend a meeting with us on January 18th. Um, and the traffic committee was wanting to see if he had any, uh, might be able to provide any assistance to the town or help the town get any funding to address potential traffic safety related issues throughout town that should arise. And he was receptive, as I said, he agreed to attend our meeting on January 18th. Um, following that meeting, he requested uh, that the traffic state, Office of the State Traffic Administration conduct a speed limit review of Center Road to determine if the long-standing 40 mile per hour speed limit um, 
throughout the center of town was still appropriate or if it should be adjusted to address various projects that have been completed over the years, such as the new firehouse, tennis courts. Um, the last couple of years they posted a new bicycle route and the installation of the pedestrian crosswalk, pedestrian crosswalk between the center parking lot and the fire department. So with that, the uh, Office of the State Traffic Administration um, subsequently requested that we share some traffic data that we collected, and I did so with a letter dated February 2nd to them, which was included in your packets. So they'll be conducting a speed review of that area, and once received, I'll share their findings. And they also reached out to the Senator um, in conjunction with the Economic Development Committee's plan um, of the future for revitalization down to the lower business district. If there's any assistance he might provide as far as traffic um, funds to assist with traffic uh, engineering and so on and so forth. Down. So I just want to make you, make you aware that um, he was brought into the loop on that, and I will let you know the outcome of the traffic study that they do for the as well. And that's all for traffic. Thank you. Is there a motion to adjourn the traffic authority? So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Unanimous. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you all.